Sorel Gorham D. Here it is. MRI physics made ridiculously simple. What am I going to promise you? I'm going to promise you no math, no complicated physics, just straight talk about what MRI physics means to me as a diagnostic and interventional radiologist. So first, what is MR physics really about? What is MRI or imaging really about? Imaging is about contrast. Here's a photo of a slice of the human body. This is of a deceased person. I just want to focus on the differences between fat and muscle here. I know that fat and muscle tissue are different. Fat is yellow, this muscle tissue is red, and I know that intrinsically those two tissues are different. And visually here I have confirmation of that. Why? Because fat and muscle are going to refract light differently into my eye. And that's that visual confirmation that these two structures are different types of molecules. Now I have an MR image. This is of a similar region. Again, I'm going to focus on the fat and the muscle tissue. And again, I just want to emphasize that fat is different from muscle here on this image. They have different grayscale values. But the question is, how does the MRI machine know that fat and muscle tissue are different? So from here, I'm basically going to talk about the sequence of events in MRI. You can't question this sequence. You simply have to know it and understand it. Just like the sky is blue, the sun is yellow, this sequence of events simply is the way it is. So here it goes. Now first, to, in order to simplify the discussion, we're not going to talk about all the different tissues in the body. We're going to simplify those down into basically fat and water. And within the fat and the water, I'm not going to be talking about all the different molecules and atoms within them. I'm only going to be talking about the hydrogen atoms. Why? because the MRI machine only sees the hydrogen atoms. It is the hydrogen atoms that are modifiable by the MR machine, and they're the only atoms or structures that actually give signal. They are the atom that's solely responsible for producing all of the images in MRI. So we're talking about fat and water, we're talking about hydrogen atoms. What's the first step? The first step is I take those atoms and I put them in an extremely powerful magnetic field. How powerful are we talking? I'm talking 3 Tesla, meaning about 25,000 times as powerful as the Earth's natural magnetic field. This activates those hydrogen atoms. It puts them in a state where they're now susceptible to forms of energy. So now I'm going to add energy into the system. What type of energy do I use? I use radio frequency energy. Now you may be wondering, well, what the heck is radio frequency energy and why? Again, you can't question the sequence, you simply have to understand it. So what is radio frequency energy? It's a type of energy that exists on the electromagnetic spectrum. It's the same as light, it's the same as sound, it's the same as x-ray. The only difference is the wave that describes radio has a different frequency and wavelength than, say, the wave that describes light. So it's simply energy that exists at a radio frequency and a radio wavelength. So, I have these hydrogen atoms. I'm adding radio frequency energy into these hydrogen atoms. After that, I simply wait. I simply wait and see what's going to happen to that energy. Right, as you know, anything that's in a high energy state is going to try to decrease its energy level. So if I add energy into the system, the system is going to release that energy into the surrounding structures. It turns out that the hydrogen atoms in fat release that energy faster than the hydrogen atoms in water. So I try to exploit that difference between fat and water in terms of its ability to release that radio frequency energy. I track that difference and then I assign grayscale values to that difference. So for example, if fat releases that, that energy faster, I'm going to make fat bright. Right? Water slower, so I'm going to make water dark. I do this for every hydrogen atom throughout the body and I track its position in 3D space. From those 3D tracking coordinates, I create 2D slices from this data. This 2D slice will have pixels on it, and in each of those pixels, I have a grayscale value that takes into account how much fat and how much water are in each position in 3D space. Now I have an image that I can interpret and make clinical diagnoses from. So that, in a nutshell, is an introduction to MRI physics. If you like this video, click like below or subscribe for additional content. Sorel RMD, we're talking about MRI physics.